everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Dust Designs. Today is Spotlight Saturday. It's actually the last Spotlight Saturday that we are doing for a while. So I cannot wait to share this creator with you. She is an absolute joy. Her DIYs are so beautiful. And with that said, let's go ahead and get right into this video. Hey y'all and welcome to Monarch's Market and welcome to Unicorn Dust Designs Spotlight Saturday. My name is Brenda, but I'll tell you more about me in just a few minutes. But for right now, let's do some crafting. Let's jump right into DIY number one. Look at this shelf, y'all. I love this shelf. I got it at the Goodwill for $3.99. Well, actually, the price was $3.99. I got it for half off, so I only paid $2 for this shelf. It is large, and it is very sturdy but the paint job was horrible. It had stains all over it, it was filthy, and it just needed some TLC. That's all it needed was just a little bit of love. So the first thing I did is cleaned it really, really good. And once I got it cleaned, I took this Smoky Beige by Rust-Oleum and gave it a good solid coat of spray paint. Now I did that because it really saves on your chalk paint. I wouldn't have to use two and three coats of this white Waverly chalk paint by doing that one coat of spray paint. So after I got it painted with the spray paint and it dried, I came in, used my white Waverly chalk paint like you just saw, and gave it just one coat is all it took and like i said that is thanks to that coat of spray paint i kind of found that technique as a happy little accident one day i spray painted something that i had intended to cover with chalk paint and then when i went back over it with the chalk paint i was shocked at how much or how little chalk paint i used at that point so now I use that technique all the time. So as you see, I used my truffle chalk paint to sort of distress it down a little bit. And then once I got that done, took it back outside and took my little sander and just sanded it down really good, beat it up and roughed it back up and made it look really, really vintage and rustic. And then I was ready to bring it back in and use it. But you do have to, when you do that, you do have to take a wet rag and wipe it down and make sure you get all of that sawdust back off of it again. So I did do that before I brought it back in. But once I got it wiped down, I was so excited to get it hung up on the wall. I ended up replacing it with one of my favorite shelves in my kitchen. But look this shelf. I cannot say it enough. For $2, it is super heavy, very, very sturdy, and it's a good size piece. It's a really large shelf. Now you will see a few things on this shelf that I have made in other videos. I will be happy to link those down below so that you can find out how to make that beaded garland or anything else that you see on the shelf that you like. So make sure you leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think about this shelf and how it turned out. Do you love it as much as I do? Because I'm telling you right now, this is definitely one of my favorite pieces I have ever done. And it was two stinking dollars, y'all. Two dollars from the Goodwill. So that is my first flip for today. And we are going to jump on over to DIY number two and let you see what I have done for that one. Hey y'all and welcome to Monner's Market. My name is Brenda, but my sweet grandbabies call me Monner. So that's where Monner's Market came from. Monner's just my grandma name. I get that question a lot. So I am a forensic nurse. I have been doing forensics for sex crimes for many, many years. However, after about 35 years, I retired back in 2009 and then this year I kept getting so many requests like you know we're short on nurses we need you we need you we need you we need your experience so I came out of retirement and went back to work but 
when I retired back in 09, I wanted to do something fun. So I started a party planning business. Showers, birthdays, anniversaries, weddings, and that led me into making my own like favors and centerpieces and things like that. And that led me here today. So at Moner's Market, you will find like literally such a variety. I love farmhouse, love shabby chic, love French country, but I also love making my own tumblers and anything with epoxy, like coasters and trays and jewelry and just like a, a ton of stuff. Um, it is 5.15 in the morning and I'm about to run out the door to go to work. So I'm trying to go through this quick and I don't wanna keep you long. I wanna get back into the video, but I hope you loved that shelf that I just done. That is literally my favorite shelf. It's actually hanging on my wall right there, right now. I oh, love it. Next, I'm gonna show you a couple of things that probably no one else on this sort of genre of DIYs are gonna show you. So stay tuned for that. If you've never been to my channel before, I hope you subscribe, like, comment, all of that good stuff, because you know that helps our channels. But thank you for coming, thank you for watching, and Sammy, oh my goodness, thank you so much for allowing me to be part of your Spotlight Saturday. I'm so honored of all of the thousands of people you could have chosen that you chose me. So thank you for that. Give those babies a kiss. And again, if you're new to Modern's Market, stick around, subscribe. Let's get back into the video. So for DIY number two, I'm gonna show you how to make your own tumbler. And this is the easiest thing in the world you can do. You're not gonna believe how easy this is. You take a tumbler and you spray it whatever color you want it. This was from back at, during the height of COVID, when all of the teachers were teaching virtually, and it'll make sense when you see the writing on it in a few minutes. So take whatever color you want, spray paint your cup, small, short burst, let it dry in between coats, and you won't have any runs and you'll have a flawless finish. Once you get your cup painted and it dries thoroughly, I would recommend overnight, then you're gonna get ready for your epoxy. Now epoxy is 99% of the time it's two to one. I'm sorry, one to one. So you'll have a part A and a part B. But what this is right here is something called quick coat. And you get it from Counterculture DIY. And it's like a primer for epoxy. And it is a game changer. You want to take two thin coats, spread it with a paintbrush on your cup, let it dry. Or you're going to actually have to dry it with your heat gun. Let, you know, dry it. Put your second coat on there, dry that, make sure it's dry thoroughly, which really don't take but about 15 or 20 minutes here in Florida, depending on your temperature. But you do want to make sure it's completely dry before you add your epoxy to it. Then you're going to mix your epoxy one-to-one -one ratio. I don't show you the first time, but I will show you the second time. I use 10 mLs of A and 10 mLs of B, and you want to mix it together. You know, just go by the directions. What I use is different than probably what you'll use. So just mix it according to the directions. And I use a popsicle stick that I get from the Dollar Tree to mix it with. Once you get your epoxy thoroughly mixed, I take that same popsicle stick and I swirl it on my cup. But what I did with this is I added a little bit of lime green pigment of um, micro powder. Uh, my mica powder lord have mercy get my tongue untied and then i added a little bit of platinum dust from backfist customs glitter and mix it in with my epoxy spread it out hit it with the heat gun to make sure you're popping all of the bubbles keep that heat gun moving because you will burn your epoxy and you would can actually potentially set your cup on fire believe it or not it is flammable so you have to be real careful but you do want to put heat to it to pop those bubbles. What you see me doing right there is I always have some sort of mold ready for my leftover epoxy. Now that is a door opener keychain because like I said it was during the height of COVID and whenever I'm making a cup for someone I always throw in some earrings or a keychain or something like that as a free little gift sort of like as a thank you. Anyway you let your cup spin on a cup spinner. I will have several listed in my Amazon store below. They're very inexpensive, as little as $15 or $20. But 
since epoxy is self-leveling, you do want a cup turner. You don't want to have to sit there and turn that cup for an hour or two or however long it takes for it to set. So you let your cup spin, and then you add your decal. Whatever you've decided to put on there, you can use stickers from the Dollar Tree. You can cut it with a Cricut if you have one, which is what I did. This one says teachers can do virtually anything. And now I'm ready for my last and final coat of epoxy. Now this time when I mix my epoxy, I'm going to do 15 mLs of A and 15 mLs of B because I want a little thicker coat. And this is just me mixing it together. And then once I get it good and mixed together, I'm going to add a little bit more of that platinum dust so that that sparkle is on top of my writing also. And it's all just one cohesive piece. So once I get everything, now I do like, that's what you see me doing here. I do like to heat my cup up a little bit before I put my epoxy on. It just makes it go on a little bit smoother in my opinion. So that's just me hitting it with a little bit of heat. This is the platinum dust. That stuff is gorgeous. Add a little bit of platinum dust to your mixture. Mix it in really good. And then I take my popsicle stick and I swirl that epoxy all over my cup. Please make sure you are doing two things. Wear gloves. Do not expose your skin to this because you'll never get it washed off. And be in an extremely well ventilated area because it stinks and it's not good for you to breathe in. I have a mask that I wear whenever I'm doing this, but if you're outside and you're in a well ventilated area, that's not necessary. So I'm spreading on my epoxy and then I'm taking my glove tan and I'm going to smooth it out. I'm going to hit it with my heat gun until I feel like it's good and, you know, leveled out and even. And then I'm just going to let it spin for well this is called fast set so i don't have to let this spin but for about an hour but i would not recommend working with fast set as a beginner because it dries so quick you don't have any room for error like you got to know what you're doing and you just got to be right on top of it another thing i recommend is going to the dollar tree and getting some of their tumblers they can be plastic they can be metal they can be whatever you want them to be you can put epoxy on anything and practice with dollar tree cups I did that, and I'm so glad I did because I would have wasted a lot of money in the beginning had I not. But practice makes perfect, and I surprised myself on a few of my very first ones. They actually turned out really good. But that's all there is to it. This cup is finished, and once it gets through turning, we will clean the top. We'll take some Dawn dish soap and wash the inside and outside really, really good. And it's ready for use after it cures. Now, it takes about 72 hours to fully cure. So don't give it to anybody to drink out of for, you know, 72 hours. Because you want to make sure that that epoxy is cured. But that's it. Let's get into my next DIY. For DIY number three, I'm going to make a noodle board. Again, super duper quick and easy. So a noodle board is a stove cover. Some people call it a noodle board. Some people call it a stove cover. I call it a stove cover. <laughs> anyway, you want to take some boards from Home Depot or Lowe's or Menards or whatever you have close to you. You are going to need four 29 and a half inch, six inch wide pieces of board. Now, I cut my own, but they will cut it for you where you can just bring it home and decorate it, put it together and decorate it. Then you're going to need two two inch wide pieces of board 22 inches long all of that will be down in the description box below if you didn't catch that so once I got my boards cut I laid them out on a table but the table is so old that it just wasn't even so I had to move it to a different table but this is me just kind of checking my boards making sure that everything is cut evenly making sure there's no splinters in there is there anything that I need to sand down you know just kind of giving it the once over so I'm just going to lay it out make sure that I'm cut even which if you mark you know if you're doing your own cutting and you mark really well measure and mark well then your boards are going to be perfect every time your cuts are going to be perfect every time so this is me just laying the other boards out and I'm like yeah okay well that's when I discovered I couldn't lay it flat so I put it on this table lay it out and I take wood glue now the wood glue I'm using here is the gorilla wood glue but you can use any kind of wood glue even the Dollar Tree wood glue it is very good wood glue 
put it down and then I add a few brad nails to the top and then once I get the other side down I'll flip it over and add some brad nails to the bottom my grandson happened to be leaving for school this particular morning and ask me if I needed any help so I let him sort of pull my boards together you'll see that in just a second where he just kind of grabs my boards and pull them together where I can get a good good tight fit now you don't have to do that but he was standing right there and I figured what the heck I'd take him up on it while he was headed out so I put my glue on my board go to flip it over he grabs my boards pulls them tight I put it down throw a couple brad nails in there and it's ready to go now I'm ready to sand it down and stain it or paint it or whatever it is you're gonna do to make it beautiful I am using a I want to say it was a dark walnut finish on this I don't honestly remember which stain I used but use whatever you want to use you do you so once another thing too after you sand your any kind of board you always want to take a, a very damp rag and get all that sawdust off before you sand it or paint it so you don't have any of that grit in your you know like in your stain so once I got it stained let it dry then it's ready for a coat of polyurethane some people add the polyurethane now some people add it later some people don't add it at all I like to add a coat of polyurethane now this is the the Smith family is what they wanted on this so I use my Cricut again you can use stickers from the Dollar Tree or whatever you want to use but I used my Cricut to make a stencil and once I got it cut out and I laid it onto my noodle board I like to take Mod Podge and go over the whole entire stencil and what that does is it seals in the edges so that when I use my paint I know that there's not going to be any like leaks or runs or anything going up under my stencil then I paint it and when you're painting it another thing too I didn't show it here but you want to stipple it you want to pounce it up and down you don't want to swipe or wipe because it's going to go up under even if you have Mod Podge and it's gonna you're gonna have runs and bleeds so then I'm, this is me just taking off my stencil and once I got that off then it's ready for polyurethane now on my last coat my preference is I like to add two coats of polyurethane again you do you if you don't want to use it don't use it but it protects your paint it protects your wood and it gives me the ability to set a pot or something on top of it that I can you know wash it after there's a mess been put on it you know I had one of my granddaughters put her chocolate bunny at Easter time on top of mine oh let me stop right here I forgot to cut the little piece out to the left of V so what I had to do is salvage this little piece from the template that I made and then I had to go back and measure to make sure I was putting it in the right spot it, it just looked wonky and I'm like what is wrong with this something's missing and my husband walked up and he said wasn't there supposed to be a line to the left of V and I was like oh man <laughs> but I'm glad he told me that before I took my stencil off and crumbled it up because normally I rip it off and crumble it up and throw it in the trash but I was able to save this little piece here so that I could go back in and add that little line that I missed or that I missed and you know give it a good finished look I forgot about that right there that's funny but I mean you know well, I'm not perfect nobody's perfect and if I ever went through one project without messing something up honey I would be the happiest person in the world <laughs> so this is me just adding the paint in and you know finishing it up there look how easy that was super easy fix now I'm going in with my first coat of polyurethane I'm going to let that dry completely you can use a heat gun to help it along or you can let it dry on its own organically I don't know what I did I don't remember but that's the first coat then I'm gonna do a second coat and then the last thing I have to do is add my hardware some people don't even like hardware I don't know how because this is not a light board I mean it's not super heavy but it's kind of bulky and I wouldn't want to be picking it up and putting it down but I have had three requests believe it or not for no handles but I've also done 
<coughs> excuse me, over 200 of these things too. They're very popular. So just use the handles of your choice. I like to use these because they're sort of rustic looking and they're very, very inexpensive at Home Depot. I think, well, they used to be 98 cents. Now they've doubled. Now they're like $1.98 because of COVID. Everything, there's a shortage on everything. Add your hardware and voila, you are done. Look how pretty that is and how simple and easy it was to make. I absolutely love it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about this noodle board. Do you have one? Have you ever made one? Would you like to make one? Like, just tell me what you think about it. Actually, tell me what you think about all of my projects so far. The shelf, <clears throat> excuse me, the shelf, the cup, the noodle board. And now let's get into my fourth and final DIY. These are some beautiful anchorware that I got from my local Big Lot store. These were Christmas gifts that I made for my girls. And I cut out a stencil with their name, their family name on it. You put it down inside of your glass pan or you can reverse it and put it on the bottom. And that way it's not in the top of your pan. However, I called the company that makes Armor Etch and I asked them if it was safe to use inside of a dish. And they said, if you do it inside of the dish, once it's cured, put it in an oven and bake it at 500 for 15 minutes. And it bakes off all of the toxins. Now, these were just for show. So, I don't know that the girls have used it to put food in. But according to Armor Etch, it is safe to use after you do that. So you just take the Armor Etch. I use a the same thing, a popple, pop, popple stick. <laughs> there you go, Brenda. Popsicle stick from the Dollar Tree. And I just add my Armor Etch cream to my stencil. Now, with this cream, you do not want to go outside of your stencil at all even for two seconds because as soon as you put that etching cream onto glass it's going to start removing the shine off of the glass even if it's a short period of time so stay within your stencil that you make once you get another thing too, make sure you don't have any bubbles or lumps or bumps in your stencil before you start putting it on you want to make sure it's good and flat but once you get it on there, it says to leave it on for a few minutes. I left this on for 25, 30 minutes because in my head, it just went deeper. You know what I mean? And gave it a more brilliant, vibrant, I don't know. So what? this is what I'm doing here is I flip it upside down and I look for blank spots. If it's all filled in white, then I know I've covered the area real good and it's ready to come off. So you take warm water put it in the sink, and just rinse it off. It's that easy. And then you want to remove your stencil. Once the stencil's removed, I take dish soap, wash it really good, and it is done. And I can't wait to show you. I use a black hand towel that's like 100 years old. But look at that. Look at that. And this etching cream is not that expensive. You can get it for less than $15 or $20. And it goes a long, long, long way. I have probably done 10 or 15 projects with one bottle of etching cream. But look how beautiful those turned out. I love, 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 love these. And etching is so easy. You will never pay somebody to do it for you again. And like I said, you can flip your image and put it on the bottom. And it doesn't even have to go inside your dish if you feel better that way. But... Just rinse it out, remove your stencil, wash it with some soap and water, and it is ready to go. You can put it up for display. You can make your favorite lasagna, whatever. But look how beautiful these turned out. My goodness, I love it. Let me know down in the comments what you think about my video today. Also, if you want to run over to my channel after you get through watching this one, I'm going to have four more projects for you. So I hope you will consider subscribing and sticking around with me and seeing what else I come up with in the future. My channel is 
fairly new. It's only a little over a year old, little maybe a year, year and a half or so. Yeah, probably closer to a year and a half old. So I'm still new and building my family. I would love to have you as a part of it. I just want to say one more time, Sammy, thank you from the bottom of my heart for inviting me to be part of your Spotlight Saturday. This is such an honor, and I am just tickled to death that you chose me out of the thousands of people you could have chosen. Thank you for coming to Bonner's Market. Thank you for watching. Be blessed. Bye now. So you guys, as you have learned, today's creator was Brenda from Monner's Market. I met Brenda as, a, she was one of my subscribers and we talked and she started her YouTube channel and I'm absolutely so proud of her for sticking with it and for starting this channel. For all of you guys who are wanting to start one, she's proof. You just got to get out there. You got to do it. You got to be consistent. And I am so happy that she is on my channel and getting spotlighted today. And you guys know, go down in the description box, check out the links because she's going to have more new DIYs on her channel right after this. And then make sure to like and subscribe to her channel if you are digging her content. And you guys know the drill with this channel. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe and comment down below for me. It helps you to know that you're enjoying my content and then they'll share it out to the world. And you guys, have a good one. I adore you. I appreciate you. We will be back here next Tuesday. Bye. How about you don't interrupt my intro? Okay. And then you do it again. You're going to wake our baby up. Okay. I wonder if anybody will know I'm doing all of these in one day. Well, now they will because you just told them. Okay.